So, today a new Assassin's Creed game has been announced. Uh, there are those that have been anticipating this announcement for the past few days um, because it was leaked a few days ago. And uh, this particular uh, Assassin's Creed game is something that people have been asking for for years, for over a decade. And so basically what this is, this is Assassin's Creed Japan. But the interesting thing about it, at least, you know, judging from the concept, is that uh, Ubisoft has chosen to go with the dual protagonist trope. And uh, the dual protagonist trope usually works. I haven't seen a case where the dual protagonist trope has uh, tanked the game or caused the game to flop. It usually always works because you can design a game that has two different play styles you know, based on the, the two different characters, the two different playable characters that um, are inserted in the story. And the story usually uh, benefits as well, because by focusing on just two different characters, you're more likely to have, you know, uh, three-dimensional storytelling. So it's very interesting uh, the direction that they've chosen to go with this particular game. Another interesting thing about it is that the identity of the characters they chose to go with is probably not what most expected. You have two different protagonists. One is a Japanese female, and the other is a black male. And the black male is based on some kind of uh, real-life Japanese uh, historical uh, legend. Uh, one character is a ninja, and the other one is a samurai. And uh, the Japanese female, she's the ninja, and her gameplay is going to revolve around stealth-based gameplay. That's going to be um, a bit different from older Assassin's Creed entries. And then the black male, he's going to be the samurai. And uh, his gameplay is going to revolve around, according to what I read, it's going to revolve around taking on um, mass groups of enemies at once. So by playing as, you know, one character, you can have more of a stealth-based approach if that's, you know, your gameplay style, or if you want a more aggressive, you know, hands-on approach, then you can play as the samurai. And uh, the game is coming out November the 15th. So just judging from the debut trailer, it looks promising, right? It looks like it's delivering what people have been asking for for years from Assassin's Creed and from Ubisoft. But, you know, it's funny because as I went on the uh, YouTube video for this reveal, most of the comments on said video for this premiere trailer were warning people not to pre-order the game. I was seeing comments up on there saying things like, oh, this is Ubisoft. Don't pre-order. This is a Ubisoft game. You can't trust them. And it's interesting seeing comments like that because generally speaking, no matter which franchise or which company we're talking about, you normally don't see comments like that, you know, negative comments like that out of the gate. But that just points as to how much of a terrible company Ubisoft actually is and how anti-consumer they are. One of the things I've noticed about this game in particular is that even before this debut trailer, in the days leading up to the reveal of this uh, debut trailer, Ubisoft had already announced what the price was for the season pass and how much everything was going to cost. And that within of itself is a huge red flag. So Ubisoft has already detailed the Premium Edition, Collector's Edition, and the Season Pass with an exclusive quest that they've kept out of the game to purposely put in the Season Pass to entice people to spend more money on this game. And they did something similar with Star Wars Outlaws, which is also coming out later this year. That's yet another open world game from them that's coming out later this year. So if we look at the, the fine details of said edition. If you look at these prices, they're trying to get people to pay over $100 already for 
said gold edition ultimate edition they're really trying to get you to spend that extra cash we have character packs photo filters exclusive quests they're trying to up those pre-order numbers and the reason they're trying to do that is because most video games make their money at launch and in particular a lot of the early sales for video games come from pre-order numbers ubisoft is notorious for this they want you to go out and purchase that collector's edition which features you know figurines and and other random bullshit that you don't need art books and lithographs and steelbook cases as this article mentions there's no price for this extravagant bundle just yet but don't expect it to be cheap oh it's not going to be cheap it's not going to be cheap and it's funny because the comments on this article also reflect my feelings on what's actually going on here which is ubisoft trying to gouge their audience for more cash such as this comment right here companies need to stop doing these actually no that's not the problem people need to stop buying these i've been saying it for years collector's editions and the like are a big problem in the video game industry and they continue to be a problem here's yet another comment ubisoft isn't stopping with the season pass exclusive quest there's another one like i said they just did this earlier this year with star wars outlaws they put in a, a canto bite exclusive mission Jabba the Hutt exclusive mission in that game. You only have access to it prior to the launch through the season pass, from my understanding. And uh, that's not the only issue um, that I've been seeing with this game. Because of Ubisoft's chosen direction regarding the identity of its protagonists in this game, clearly that makes this game a target for the woke crowd. And when I say the woke crowd, I'm talking about the ignorant simple-minded fox news following maga right-wing morons that continue to spam the word woke every time they see a character of color that they don't like it seems that whoever this was belongs in that audience judging from the responses here far-right reactionary tantrum about wokeness Judging by a number of the comments that I've seen online for this game, there are those who clearly put themselves in the category of the far right, who are upset at this game because one of the characters is black, and the only other playable character is an Asian female. So some people are upset and some people are pissed at that. I personally don't think that it's an issue what the identity of the characters are if anything it makes the game stand out to some degree because we have already had games recently over the last few years that have an ancient japan setting the most popular one is gosa tsushima which actually comes out on pc tomorrow and so we've already had our you know ancient japan setting with our you know japanese male protagonists Ubisoft is doing something a bit different here. That part of the game is actually intriguing. Because if there's anything that I can say about Ubisoft games at this point, is that they remain very proficient at capturing your interest. But unfortunately, the problem with Ubisoft as a company continues to persist. They continue trying to rip off their consumer base, and they continue to make dim-witted business choices that affect their bottom line such as the game's physical copy requiring an internet connection to install the game yes we are still seeing nonsense like this now this doesn't affect people like me anymore because the majority of video games that i purchase are digital ever since i made the jump to pc about four years ago but there are those few people who still prefer a physical copy over a digital copy and this is something i can't imagine is going to entice anyone to want to purchase this game who prefers a physical copy 
because you should not need an online connection in order to play something that you bought physically. But that's what's going on here. And this was confirmed by the PlayStation Store. Online play required. So even if you buy a physical disc, as this article mentions, you put it into your system of choice, you will not be able to play what you bought without an internet connection. And you can thank Ubisoft for their clear lack of insight. And also, as this article mentions, that means years from now, when Ubisoft has moved on from this game, long after they've made their money from Shadows, and we're within the next generation of gaming, you know, whenever that will be, a physical copy of Assassin's Creed Shadows has the potential to be completely useless. And Ubisoft is a company that has shown, even recently, just recently, that they will not continue to support their older games if they're not profiting from them. And that's just the physical edition. If you look at the digital version of Assassin's Creed Shadows, oh Christ, those prices. $110 for the Gold Edition, $130 for the Ultimate Edition. You have to be a fucking fool. You have to be a goddamn fool. Or you can uh, purchase the uh, Ultimate Edition through their uh, subscription service, Ubisoft Plus, $18 a month, if you so choose. If you're playing this game on PC, if you intend to play this game on PC, the question is at that point, since the majority of PC players are on Steam, will Assassin's Creed Shadows be available on Steam? The likely answer is no, because Ubisoft has not released any of their high-profile games on Steam over the last several years. They haven't supported Steam. In fact, for a long time, Ubisoft actually pulled their games from Steam. Eventually, they came back to the platform, but they still don't release their newer games on Steam day one. So, I don't see Assassin's Creed Shadows up on here on Steam, but I do see it on the Epic Games Store, which I'm not surprised about. Ubisoft, they prefer to sell their games on the Epic Games Store for some reason. So that's going to turn a lot of people off. So either you can purchase the game on the Epic Games Store, or you can purchase it through uh, Ubisoft, through their uh, digital you know, subscription service, if you're playing on PC. So that already, that's going to turn off uh, the majority of PC players. And uh, like I said, I've already showed what the prices are going to be for this game. $70 for the Standard Edition, $110 for the Gold Edition, and $130 for the Ultimate Edition. And then you have the, uh, the subscription service that you can uh, play the game on day one, Ubisoft Plus. The game will be available on Ubisoft Plus as long as you're paying for their... Um, their premium subscription service, which is $18 a month, which is probably the best bet if you want to play this game day one. Instead of spending $70 on it, you could technically spend $18 on it, probably go through it within a span of two weeks, and then just cancel the subscription. That's probably the best way to play this game and to spend as few dollars as possible. The question though is, is it really worth doing all of that? As of right now, I would say no, because Ubisoft clearly has not changed. Their anti-consumer business practices have not changed, as I showed earlier in the video. They're asking people to pay for uh, these ridiculous overpriced editions, be it the Ultimate Edition or the Collector's Edition you know, the Gold Edition. They're asking people to pay for a ridiculous season pass for this game. And the funny part about that is they haven't even shown the gameplay yet. If you scroll through this trailer, there is no gameplay. There is no gameplay in here whatsoever. This is a CG trailer that contains no gameplay footage. But they want you to go ahead and spend as much money as possible whether it's $70, $110, $130, $140, $160, $180, 
$130 or it's through their subscription service that they're going to continue charging you monthly for. And to make matters worse, and to emphasize my point that Ubisoft has not changed, this game in particular is being made by, from what I read, the team, the same team that made Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That's probably the biggest red flag of them all, because I despise the RPG Assassin's Creed games, all three of them. The size of this game, this is from the same team as Odyssey, they're making this game the same size for the open world map as Assassin's Creed Origins Egypt, but they claim that it exists on a more realistic scale, which that only tells me that it's going to take even longer to get to where you want to go on the open world map. I am sick and tired of bloated open world games that are just big just to be big. It's one of the reasons I haven't bought an Assassin's Creed game in years, and I fell off of the franchise. See, this is the problem with Ubisoft. Ubisoft knows how to sell a concept, but that's all they know how to do at this point. They'll give you a, a you know, a sharp debut trailer such as this. You'll watch a CG trailer for one of their upcoming games, and you'll think to yourself, you know what, that's something that entices me. That's something that I would like to experience. But the problem with Ubisoft is their execution. Execution is the company's biggest weakness because all they do is deliver to you the same bloated open world slop that they've been making for years that doesn't really change much. And mind you, Assassin's Creed has not been a yearly franchise for a number of years now. I believe Syndicate was the last one that was released on a, a yearly schedule before they decided to space uh, the games out. It used to be a yearly franchise like Call of Duty, but despite the fact that Assassin's Creed hasn't been a yearly franchise in years, Ubisoft continues to release the same games, the same type of game with the same tropes over and over and over again, and they continue to try and rip off their consumer base with each release. And that is why I have no interest in Assassin's Creed Shadows. Again, conceptually, the game looks fine. I have nothing to complain about regarding the game's concept or its characters. But something tells me when they reveal the gameplay for this, it's not going to be anything special and it's certainly not going to be anything that's worth $70, let alone $110 or $130, plus whatever else they want you to purchase. So. There you have it, there's Assassin's Creed Shadows, more open world bloat from Ubisoft, a company that refuses to change and will not change at this point. When it comes to a company like Ubisoft, it is best as a consumer to ignore them and pretend that they don't exist. I'll give Star Wars Outlaw somewhat of a pass because of the IP. There has never been an open world Star Wars game, believe it or not. And I'm curious to see what Ubisoft does with this game. But according to what I'm seeing here, similar to Assassin's Creed Shadows, it's also going to be available on Ubisoft Plus, uh, their subscription service day one. So that's probably for the best for consumers because you can spend $18, play the game for a few hours. If you don't like it, then you can cancel your subscription. You only lost $18. But with Assassin's Creed, this is a franchise that has an established history, and it's a franchise that lost its quality a long time ago. So unless Ubisoft does something radically different with this game from a gameplay perspective, as far as I'm concerned, there's no point in bothering with this. They have a chance to impress people when they eventually showcase the gameplay reveal, but I think this is going to end up being the same nonsense that they've been releasing for years. I guess we'll see once they reveal the gameplay.